Scientists looking at whale fossils believe they've uncovered some clues as to how modern day whales and dolphins evolved to have the ability to use echolocation. Welcome back to Paleopedia, and the ability to echolocate means that you can produce sound, hear the echo of that sound, and use it to map out your surroundings. Several different groups of animals can echolocate, but the ones that most people are familiar with are the bats and cetaceans, whales and dolphins. With cetaceans, it's primarily the odontocetes that people think of, the toothed whales, sperm whales, dolphins like orcas, bottlenose, things like that. Currently, there's no evidence that suggests that baleen whales can echolocate the same way that their toothed cousins can, but there are some studies done that suggest certain species like humpbacks or bowheads can use some kind of primitive form of it, but we're not entirely sure. But pretty much every species of odontocete, again toothed whales, can use echolocation to some varying degree. They primarily use it to navigate their surroundings and find food unlike other animals which primarily use smell or sight. And while some species of toothed whales like sperm whales have a very highly specialized form of echolocation, we're not entirely sure exactly when or how these whales evolved the ability to echolocate. While we know that most archaeocetes or ancient early whales like Ambulocetus, Basilosaurus, and the Dorodontines probably couldn't echolocate at all, they did have exceptionally good hearing, which was effectively the blueprint for echolocation to evolve in cetacean lineages. The way that modern cetaceans echolocate is by producing sound in their nasal passage. Most people probably think that whales simply click their tongue and produce the sound, but they actually use what are called phonic lips, which are a structure inside the nasal passage underneath the blowhole that they can squeeze together along with several air sacs also connected to the nasal passage to produce those high-pitched clicking sounds. Once the clicking is produced, the melon, which is effectively the bulbous forehead, amplifies the sound and sends it out ahead of them directionally. And then as the echo reaches the whale, the fatty channels in their lower jaw conduct the sound towards the inner ear, which is how they are capable of hearing so well and how they can use their echolocation to map out their surroundings. Consequently, their skull comes out as asymmetrical around their blowhole because of the presence of the phonic lips and the air sacs. So we can use the asymmetry of the skull to trace evolution through the whale fossil record. The only problem is evolution is a slow and continuous process. So it wasn't like we have a odontocete that didn't have an asymmetrical skull so it couldn't echolocate and then its immediate next relative had a fully asymmetrical skull. It's a gradual process. So the question of when did echolocation evolve has been generally unknown but this new study gives us a little bit more insight to it. Researchers from the New York Institute of Technology and the University of California Museum of Paleontology analyzed a selection of fossils that included two species from the genus of dolphin called Xenorophus. Xenorophus is a early primitive form of odontocetes, which are, of course, the toothed whales. It lived along the eastern side of North America around 25 to 30 million years ago and was, for its time, rather large, being around 10 feet long or so. And similar to today's odontocetes, Xenorophus had asymmetry in and around the blowhole, just not as pronounced as its later relatives. Interestingly, Xenorophus also had a uniquely shaped nose. Its snout was bent several degrees to the left. Previous studies of archaeocetes suggest that this twisting of the snout was in correlation to an asymmetrical placing of fat bodies, which helped the animal with directional hearing. But Xenorophus took this one step further. The fat bodies in its lower jaw were tilted forward, which exaggerated its already really well-developed directional hearing. The researchers think this might have been used in a similar function to the asymmetrical ears of owls. Basically, it allows them to figure out exactly from which direction a sound is coming from really well. This suggests that while Xenorophus having a less pronounced asymmetry in and around the blowhole wasn't capable of producing as high-pitched sounds as its modern-day counterparts could, it was still capable of figuring out the direction of wherever a sound was coming from really well. Therefore, 
this species of dolphin likely marked a key transitional time for the evolution of echolocation. So while we still aren't entirely sure which ancient whale was the first whale capable of using echolocation in any sort of form, we do have a little bit more clues to add to the puzzle of how whales learned to see using sound. <laughs> 